he knows how to mute me too, right, Tom? Yeah. I'm not encouraging you to do so, but you do have the power. But I thank you for sharing that. I was wondering, man, why didn't she? That's a pretty coincidence. I, I'm doing the same thing. Oh, right, when we talked on Friday, I told you what I was preaching on, so that way you could dovetail it together. So I appreciate that. Or start off with a, a little question here. So what does it mean to be holy? Set apart. That's a good answer. I have that answer written down myself. And anybody else? So, so what does it mean? So if, if, if something's holy, what, what is it? Any other thoughts? Godlike. Sacred. Absolutely. Exalted, is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah, exalted. And so... Uh, you guys are Stark's family. Too smart for me, apparently. So, yeah, the, the basic, the, the, the meaning, the holy, it, it means to, to be set apart, to be uh, set, consecrated, to be set apart. And the, the kicker is for the work, for the use of God, for, for his exclusive use. That's what it means to be holy, reserved for God and God's service, set apart for sacred use. There's that word, sacred. It also has synonymous uh, meanings of good, uh, pious, godly. We'll have to think of if something's holy, that's what we were talking about, but we can easily mistake the fruit for the, the root cause. And the reason why uh, something might be good and pious and godly is because it has been first set apart. We, we can try all we want, and we might have some good behaviors. We might put on a, a, a nice shiny veneer. But deep down, it's going to come out, especially when uh, we have those frustrations. Anybody have those frustrations where, man, you're just, you're not walking with the Lord yet that day, and it pops out. Where did that come from? And, oh, yeah. I'm nowhere near filled with the Spirit today. I'm not walking. This is, this is just raw brine. This is raw flesh coming out. I, I haven't, I haven't intentionally set myself uh, apart to God. And so today we're going to talk about that as we, we're going to kick off our however many week uh, study looking at the book of Philippians. So let me pray for our time together. Lord, we thank you that as followers of you, we are set apart. And we regrettably come in front of you knowing that our behaviors do not match that. But we're so grateful that you have set us apart. And as Dottie already shared, that you will bring it to fruition. You will complete that good work that you have already started. We're so grateful for that. Help us uh, to live to this great calling, this identity that we have in you. I pray that you would bless this time that we spend looking at your word today. Open up our hearts, our minds. Lord, give me your, your power, your unction to, to preach your word. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. So last week we had looked at... Philippians 4, right? Kind of a, a kicker. And remember... Philippians 4, he says, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Our minds should be consumed with these things. And it's tough, even in not 2020. It's tough to be, to be focused on the Lord. Now we get uh, political shenanigans, we got COVID, we got personal stuff, we have all this other stuff. And it's easy to lose our identity because we get wrapped up in things uh, of this world rather than the things of God. We forget that we're holy. We might not be uh, godly and pious, but we are set apart for God's use. And so I love Paul as he kicks off this letter here to the Philippians. He, he starts at Paul, Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus to all the saints in Christ Jesus, who are at Philippi with the overseers and the deacons, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul identifies himself with, here's my identity, hey, uh, myself and Timothy, who are we? What does it say? We're servants. Your translation may say bond servant, it might say slave, but basically, hey, we were bought with a price and we're serving the Lord with our whole heart as best as we can. And I love in Romans how he, he wrestles with sin, does he not? And I, I do the things I don't want to do, and I do the things that I do not want to do. It's, just, it's this, this mess. It's this mess that we all struggle with every day. But it is, I, I'm the servant of Jesus Christ. That's what he's about, which is why he's had incredibly fruitful ministry. 
He's got his, uh, one of his chief disciples, Timothy, with him. They're going around. Uh, they're right now, they're writing from in prison, which really shapes the book. And it, when you see the joy where he's in prison, despite his circumstances, he's excited about the gospel, the kingdom going forward. So this is who he is. And who does he write to? He writes to the saints in Christ Jesus. To all the saints. Sorry, yeah, we're in the book of Philippians. If I, I meant to have a title slide, but that didn't get in there. So we're in the book of Philippians if you want to. Um, or just pick any book of Paul. And maybe you can track along. He hasn't written that many letters. It's all one sentence anyways. So he writes to these saints, and you know, up until this week, I've kind of glazed over that word saints. Before you were just the saints, yeah, we're all, we're saints, we're whatever. You can have, you know, obviously the Catholic Church has a different definition of what a saint is. But does anybody know what that word saint means? What does that word saint mean, if you were going to go look at that Greek? Yeah, holy ones. These are, to you holy ones, to you set apart, so it's not just... I, you know, like a title like Christian, we overlook Christian. Yeah, well, we're just Christians. And a lot of us, we don't like to use the word Christian because there's some folks who use it and their life isn't like Christ. But, man, Christian, if I'm a Christian, I'm supposed to be one who, who my, my uh, priorities and my character matches Christ. That's what a Christian is. If we're a saint, he's saying, your identity, you are a holy one. You're a holy one because of who? Because, who are they in? Christ Jesus. You are set apart. This is your identity. Get out of the, the, the frustrations of your life. This is who you are. You're elevated. He's writing to the saints. Not, he, first and foremost, he's writing to the people in Philippi. He said, oh yeah, also, yeah, the overseers and the deacons. Oh yeah, the, the church leaders, you guys as well. But he's writing to the everyday believer. I love it. And so I think it's important for us to recognize that identity. So they're saints, they're holy. What other word do we use for, for this? Sanctified. These are folks that are sanctified. Once again, we, we, can, we look at the fruit of sanctification and say that's what sanctification is. It's, man, I'm, I'm really acting righteous and godly. Well, no, I'm sanctified if I'm in Jesus Christ. Ephesians 2, 5 and 6, By grace you have been saved and raised up with him and seated with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This is our identity as followers of Jesus Christ. We forget it because my mouth gets in my way, my behaviors get in my way, this world frustrates me, I'm not thinking about those things, those Philippians 4, 8 things. And so it's easy, Satan comes in and he distracts a little bit. Remember, if you're one degree off, you're trying to go 360, you're going 359, after a mile you're 92 feet away, after 60 miles you're a mile away, you just, we slowly, it's easy to deviate. This world can lie to us. That's what Satan does. He deceives us. But this is who we are. We are set apart. We are sanctified. This is something that uh, Jesus has already done for us. And as Dottie shared, he's going to bring it to completion. He started. He will finish. And he comes with the greeting. Grace to you. Peace from God our Father. I love that. He greets him with, with grace and peace. You know, if we're going to do ministry, if we're going to have kingdom impact, uh, reaching the lost, furthering the gospel, we're going to need God's grace. Because we're going to mess up so much. But we're going to need God's peace. That way we're not beating ourselves up. Oh, I could have done, I should have done, I would have done. Uh, grace, we're, we'll regularly be insufficient. But it's God's grace that makes us sufficient. He doesn't condemn us, but keeps using us. We're not condemned, but we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, 5.1. Romans 5.1. So he prays this over them. And then goes into verses 3 through 5. He says, I thank my God in all remembrance of you. How awesome is that? Every time he thinks about the Philippian church, he's thankful for them. That's pretty impressive. So I don't think about it. Is put in your mind your favorite person. You got your favorite person in your mind right now? Now, now think about it. Every time you think about that favorite person, every time you think about that favorite person, is it always thankfulness? Probably not. Probably not. So this speaks to Paul, the, the grace that he has. This also speaks heavily to the Philippian church. Because as we know, so it's easy. Okay, one person, you, you can 
you know, they might be a fantastic, awesome, they, they knock it out of the park, they're a incredible blessing. But you, you know, when you get a group of at least three to five people, a hundred people, I'm not sure who I mean you're in the Philippian church. But man, when you think about a, a, a group, it, things can get a little more dicey, can't they? You get a hundred people, you're going to have a hundred different personalities. Boy. He says, I thank God in all my remembrance of you. I don't think Paul's a liar. I think this is how he honestly, genuinely reacts. Always in every prayer of mine, for you all, making my prayer with joy. So as he's praying, he's, he's lifting up that there's this joyful activity for this. I'm sure he's praying for, for God's blessings on them. But, but the why comes into account. Verse 5. Why is it this way? He says, because of your partnership in the gospel. That's why it's joyful. Not because, uh, man, you have taken such good care of me. Not because you guys are so nice to each other. Not because of a million different worldly reasons. But, said, but your partnership in the gospel. Paul's elevated it. Remember, who, who is he writing to? What's that S word? He's writing to the saints. These called out ones. He said, hey, you guys are living up to this calling. You've really partnered uh, with me from the first day until now. He, he's just so incredibly grateful for them. So let's take a, a walk down there. Actually, before we get there, so let's take a, well, what is the gospel? It's so easy to have different definitions of the, the gospel. So what is the gospel? Well, we know it's good news. Good news what? It starts with bad news, that we're all sinners. We were born sinners with a sinful nature. But Jesus, he lived a perfect life. He is God, died for our, on the cross for our sins. But then he rose again on the third day to show that he defeated death and sin. That, that's the, the good news. In a nutshell, we'll all have different um, wordings or you know, things of that nature, but that's the essence of the, the gospel. That's the good news, and they've partnered in this. Not that they've simply uh, done a social justice ministry, which isn't bad. We need to have those hands and feet. How do we reach people that are hurting? Remember, it's from, from before until now. So just a little background of how he got to, to Philippi. So he's, Paul, he's starting off. He's with uh, Silas. He's with... Timothy, I think Luke might be there, might not. Uh, but here they go. They're, they're in Asia. That's the, the golden star there. They're moving through. Remember, they're going through Phrygia and Galatia. The Holy Spirit's forbidden them. Don't speak in Asia, which is pretty weird. Like, this is his job. This is what he's going to do. So they move along. Uh, they get to uh, someplace else, and the Holy Spirit it didn't allow them to go north. But then he gets this vision of... Uh, sorry, I should have made that longer. Right now it's in Philippi, but as he gets to the coast, he gets this wonderful vision for man, come over to Macedonia and help us. There, there's this man. So he says, God has called us to preach. So they go, and the first place they get to is Philippi. Do you any of you all remember, who did he, who did they meet when they get there in Philippi? You remember that first person? That purple lady. Yeah, we got Lydia. So he gets there. There's, there's this great the conversion of, of Lydia. He goes looking for these people, these godly people, God seekers, and they're down there praying. He goes, here's the gospel. Lydia comes to, uh, to faith. Uh, her household was all baptized. Lydia says, hey, come stay with me. There's this great excitement. And so the, the Philippian church is, is born there. And then but can you move on? Paul and Silas, there's this uh, person. There's this young, I believe it's a young lady, a slave girl. She's saying these men are the, the servants of the Most High God to proclaim the way of salvation, which seems like that's a pretty great thing. I mean, if I had somebody with a little bullhorn going in front of me, you know, it almost seems like John the Baptist type stuff, does it not? But of course, this is demonic activity. Uh, Paul uh, casts out the demons from them. The owners are pretty upset because this is how they make their money from the divination. And so they're, uh, they're beaten, they're imprisoned, everything goes on. And this is a pretty low point, I would imagine. But Paul doesn't give up. He keeps on going in the midst of this tough stuff. And so you have Paul and Silas in prison. The, the, uh, the prisoner was... I'm sorry, the... the there's this big earthquake. The prison guard, remember, he's, he's terrified. Oh, no, all my, prison, my people have escaped. I might as well just go kill myself so that way I don't get killed. Uh, but Paul, he doesn't run or flee. Doesn't an earthquake from God seem like the perfect opportunity to leave jail? I'll tell you what, that's my natural reaction. All right, great. Lord, you freed me from prison. I've been in prison because I cast out demons. Obviously, you've rescued me. So it's so important. Remember, God's ways aren't our ways. What's he doing? Paul is so in tune with the, the Lord Holy Spirit. Remember, he's a called that one uh, for, for God's purpose. 
He stays there. He leads this jailer to, to Christ, and then his family says, remember the jailer says, what must I do to be saved? Well, believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. And the result, they spoke the word of the Lord to him, and all were in his house, and he and his family were baptized at once. There's this immediate, they're all in. Both with Lydia and the Philippian jail. This is a pretty exciting stuff. I'll go on. They exit, they go to Lydia's house, and encourage, and they, they move on. These are the foundations about ten years before this letter was written. Rich foundations. We'll see in the end of chapter 4 of Philippians, he said, you know, I, I went all over in this area. You guys are the ones who supported me throughout all these years. These other churches, they, they didn't, but you guys have. You've been faithful with me, partners with me. I imagine their, their ministry has grown and grown their impact on that region. Because they're focused on the gospel. Reaching that lost in their community. I love how Paul says it with every time he thinks about them, there's that joy. And that'd be awesome. Every time you think about these people, there's, there's joy. You see the reach history. And that's just a little snippet. I, I imagine they could have multiple books, perhaps a whole Bible's worth of narratives of what's gone on. But he has incredible joy when he thinks about them. And if you remember from a number of weeks back, we look at John 15. Jesus said, abide in me, and I in you, as the vine. And he says, why? So that my joy may be in you. If you're abiding, we're bearing fruit, you're following with me. And that your joy may be full. There's fullness and following Jesus. Partaking in the gospel. There's this. Whose kids are those? So then he continues on with the verse that, that Dottie's already shared. He says, I'm sure of this. He who began a work in you, good work in you will bring it to completion. That saint, at the beginning, I'm going to keep on doing these things. At the day of Christ Jesus, when he comes back, man, it's going to be full and complete. So don't, hey, today's going to be tough and you, we're not going to arrive there. Remember that grace, that peace. Keep on going on. He says, it's right for me to feel this way about you all. Because I hold you in my heart. If you all are partakers with me of grace, both in my imprisonment and the defense and confirmation of uh, the gospel. You guys are there with me, praying for me, whether I'm imprisoned or defending the gospel. So it's those words, those words sharing the gospel out there, the confirmation of the gospel. That's how we live our lives every day. If somebody uh, saw us interacting in Walmart or at a restaurant or whatever, would that be confirmation of the gospel or would that be ye? I better stay away from that church and that person. The confirmation of the gospel is the way they're, they're, they're living their lives. They're out there. He says, for God's my witness, how I yearn for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus. There's something about being around those people that are on fire for the Lord. There's something, I know I love the, the new believers in the Lord. They're, uh, they're passionate. They're on fire. They don't know much else except for that Jesus is Savior, but they're going out and sharing it. Uh, I think I told you all this before. When I first came to Christ back in 2006, everybody at BJ's Wholesale Club uh, thought I became a, uh, a Mormon or Jehovah's Witness because I was telling them about Jesus all the time. Apparently, the evangelical church does not tell people about Jesus. Is that a problem? They, they thought I was a Mormon. I, I took some of them to, to the church. Oh, okay. I didn't find out until the end. I mean, this is just this is wacky stuff. This isn't to disparage Jehovah's Witnesses or Mormons. These are good people just uh, deceived with little things that some theology has gotten off. We can talk about that another time, but if you deny Jesus who he is as God, then you've rejected all of God. I just love, he'll bring it to completion. It's not on us. We, we follow him. He's going to bear the fruit. He's going he's to make us more and more like him. But you find them incredibly attractive. Well, I want to be with you guys. I want to keep on doing ministry. Thank you for sending your support my way. And then he concludes this introductory part. And he says, my prayer that your love may abound more and more. Your love, this agape love, uh, this love that you're putting what's best according to God's standards. It's not, I, I pray that your relationships and your lovey-dovey, mushy friendships are going to abound. But no, that the, the sacrificial, it's all about the Lord and His will. God and His standards for them. 
We know it's often, often sacrificial to our desires, to our comforts. But then it will grow more and more. Well, why? We're already set apart to him. This is already our identity. But that will become part of us. We will grow in our sanctification. Grow more and more with the knowledge and discernment. As we're growing as up, we're knowledge, we're becoming, uh, knowing him more. And not just, uh, one problem we can have in the church is we know more God's stuff. And we miss God. We, we can memorize Bible verses, but we, we're not going to the Bible to see who it reveals. Uh, the Bible is not the fourth person in the Trinity. The, the Bible reveals the Trinity to us. How can we get closer to the Lord? Or our knowledge. And so this is the, the experiential knowledge. And I love the, this neat Greek word. Another fun thing learning when you study. So the gnosis is getting having the experiential, but this Greek word is epigenosis or something along those lines. So it's that epicenter. So I'm getting I'm getting really into that 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 bullseye there. I want you to, to grow more and more and man, this is who he is, not just alright, great, you're 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 you know him. But man, we're really getting to know the heart of God. We're getting closer and closer in our relationship. And so you bound with uh, discernment, that depth of insight. What do I do with this knowledge? It's great to know, okay, this is what Jesus would do, but if I have the zero discernment on what to do with that, we're in trouble. Because the Bible doesn't say, what do I do in 2020 when coronavirus hits? The Bible doesn't say, what do I do when it's a Biden-Trump election? The, the, the Bible doesn't say that. We have to discern, what, Lord, what do you want me to do? I know you, I know your heart, Lord, what do you want me to do? And so the purpose that you can approve what is excellent. You can prove what is these things of God, that this top, not just, uh, there's, uh, we can do a lot of good things, but are they the God things? Approve of what is good, what is the best thing? Why? So we can be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. I'll tell you what. I think a lot of us say, Lord, come back soon. We're excited. Come back. Rapture your church. Uh, come back. We want to be with you. I, I don't want that. There are six billion people in this world who do not know Jesus Christ. My calling is to, is to equip you all so we can share the gospel. We can spread his good news. For me, I, I, this is just my heart. It's incredibly selfish for me to want to just be in heaven. When there's so much, especially as I look at my life, and I need to look at it with grace and peace, there's a lot of opportunities that I've missed. Because I've chosen my own comfort. I've chosen my own ease, my own whatever. Can I go before the Lord right now as pure and blameless? Lord, uh, you set me apart back in 2006, these 14, 15 years. I've lived entirely for you. I haven't. Obviously, we're not going to be perfect. Uh, but Lord, I felt like I have fulfilled what you've given me to do. I don't feel like I can do that right now. I feel like there, there's, more, there's more ministry, more uh, whatever he wants me to do. In this hurting, dark community, we, we know that opioid epidemic is terrible in this area. How are we reaching those folks? We're, if we're honest, we're a pretty comfortable church. We're, we're socioeconomically, we're middle class, perhaps upper middle class. We're doing pretty well, by and large. How are we reaching those hurting in Bay County? Those who desperately need the gospel. And instead of turning to other things, they become addicted with various other things. I'm not sure if I could say I'm pure and blameless in reaching folks, my neighbors here. And we can prove what's excellent, not just uh, the, the good thing. There's lots of good things out there. So you can be filled with the fruit of righteousness. Or be filled with the fruit produced from righteous living. We know that through the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. Uh, the fruit that comes from uh, making disciples who make disciples a loss, and they're, they're reaching a loss, and there's this great chain of reaction. It's pretty, I don't know, I haven't done any study, but I would venture to say that most of us are, how do you talk about generations? I don't know, we're probably like a thousandth generation Paul disciples. If you think about it, he reached most of Europe, and most of us are, are well, he didn't reach, you know, deep into Europe, but I would venture, I guess, we're probably thousand generation Paul disciples. Because he made disciples, who then they made disciples, and they kept on, and his domino effect kept on going, and here we get to stand right now. That's pretty awesome. That's quite the heritage that we have. That's incredible fruit. Well, will our fruit be, be the same, or will we just kind of be a, a spiritual dead end? A little spiritual cul-de-sac. 
It's a nice community. But is it going forward? Is it going somewhere? We could be filled with the, the fruit from righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. And all this is just, it's all Him. We can't change hearts. We can be a conduit for Him, but we can't change anybody's heart. One day I'll learn that, that I can't do it. We just want to be faithful. So as we close out today, I want us to, to bring us back to that, that identity. Who are we? We are saints, and more importantly, we are set apart to God for His use. Whatever that use is. There's 48 of us here today, right, Wayne? should be reading text messages while I preach. But there's 48 of us here today, 48 with, with, with unique spiritual giftings, uh, people that we're going to interact with. Lord, what do you want from me? How do I further your kingdom? And for some of us, it might be building into relationships that he'll bear fruit years down the line. For other of us, it's going to be opening our mouth today and there'll be uh, fruit coming today. But are we going to say, Lord, here I am. Send me. Remember, that, that was the, the verse, if you can remember way back before COVID was a problem for us. That Isaiah, Lord, here I am, send me. I, I believe that was the verse he gave us. Are we going to be a church that says, Lord, here I am, send me. What do you want me to do in this community? I hope that would be that would be us. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the incredible impact that Paul has had. We thank you that things got furthered when things got incredibly tough, that he remained faithful to you. Lord, there's so many frustrations in this world. There's so many distractions, so many things that can get us off, off kilter. Lord, Help us to focus on you. Help us to bear much fruit for your glory. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.